So let, let me put a little summary here on the recording, just so, so that you have it. Um, we were talking about your specific events and the way they're described in the most recent version of my book, The Unseen Therapist. And then you were telling me about, I'm calling it childhood abuse. And you got slapped in the face, but criticized a lot and so on from childhood. We were talking about how children pick that up. And until they get resolved, it affects things even in current time. All right. Now, I just had you say, I'm not good enough as a sentence to sort of get a sense of this on a scale of zero to 10. Your response was that as a child back then, it would have been a 10. You've worked on it some in the meantime. So now maybe it's a six. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Okay. All right. Yep. It's still in me, she says. Okay. Another sentence. Another sentence. I don't count. Eight. 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 Now, what I'm looking for mostly is your current understanding of your current emotion about it. As you think about it now, it's an eight now. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the next one. I'm not lovable. Not ten. It's a ten. Okay. Going back to that time. I mean, so much in my life. So much in my life. Has been wonderful. Has been wonderful. Has been wonderful. I've had friends. I've had friends. I have close family, have close ties. family ties. It's great. It's great. I come back to that. And, um, I, that's what I've thought I'm going to be Now. He's just looking for right now. So. Well, I, I'm not sure I heard all that. Uh, um, she she hasn't quite settled on a number yet. Uh, oh, as okay. it now. Oh, thanks me back. It and takes it, her back. Then. And puts me up. So try not to overthink it. I think he's just looking for an immediate gut reaction. Mm -hmm. Yes. If that's as it applies to you right now. I'm not lovable. Six. What's that? What gets to no, Of course. Right. I guess what she's saying is it gets disproved over the course of her life because she has close family and loving friends and okay. stuff, but still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, but that's what I that's that's where I'm going with all of this. Okay. Because um, my next set of questions really has to do with your logical response, not your emotional response, your logical response. So when we say she, I'm not I'm loving you the response already. Yeah. 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 You just gave me a, when you gave me a six, you are taking to me, you were taking your emotional response, which may have been a 10, but you're saying, oh, yeah, but logically I've got friends and family and so on. Okay. So what we're looking for is the emotional response. I'm not lovable. Oh, it, it, logically, yes, but emotionally, what? Four, how it, four is how it hits you right now. I'm not lovable. Okay. Okay. Well, all right, Sally, just so you know, just so you know, I, um, um, I've developed over time an ability to kind of tune into people. And I'm not always right. Not by any means. I want you to know that. 
Um, but I get much higher numbers than you're giving me. Okay. That doesn't make you wrong. That's not me criticizing you. We, our systems do a lot of things. We don't want to admit a lot of stuff. Okay. And it, yeah. your, your numbers may be accurate. Maybe not. I'm just telling you that I got, mm -hmm. I get a little hit an intuitional yeah. hit. That's I think there's fine. a new England Vermont Yankee uh, cultural component there uh, where it's like, you just do not complain about things. You don't, you always self pedal well you just yeah okay but let me ask you this now sally logic logically logically speaking are you good enough you still looking for a one to ten yeah zero to ten but yeah zero to ten Sometimes, sometimes, eight right now. Okay. Logically speaking, yes. Not you were kind of doing logically the first time when you were. Yeah. Having an emotional reaction and then reasoning back yeah, to yeah, okay. the past and correcting it. So I got it. Do it. Yeah. This exercise can be a challenge, but but I I'm getting the sense of where we are from it. So that's that's what's really important. We don't have to have the numbers precisely accurate, okay. But what I'm getting is that your emotional response starting clear back in childhood has not been resolved as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And your logical response is a lot healthier than your emotional response. You really are lovable. Even though your mother may not mm -hmm. reflect that. Okay. She wants to tell you one more thing. A thing that happened. This was one of the worst. I'm in. But first of all, first of all, how old is she? She was in junior high school. Okay. So maybe 13, 12, 13. Okay. And take her with call on people to read aloud. Teacher was calling on people to read aloud. I had parents looking at tomboys making a romantic poem. She, that's the name of the book? Um, she, what happened. I was enjoying. She was enjoying a, tomboy, a tomboy's reading. Reading, a classic reading aloud. A classical romantic poem. So this is somebody in your class who was a tomboy reading aloud a, a classic romantic poem. And then the teacher stopped her and called on me. She didn't fight. She didn't flee. She froze. And I felt terrible paralyzed. I could not say one word. I was paralyzed. I could not say one word. And that was so traumatic. And that was so traumatic. And then I had to talk to someone. And then I had to talk to someone. So I asked my mother. So I asked my mother. I told her what happened. I told her what happened. And she said, and so many words. And she said in so many words. I can't help you. I can't help you. And I felt right. so betrayed. And I felt so betrayed. And so alone. And so alone. Unprotected. unprotected. And that's when my voice started going out. And that's when her voice started going out. Oh. Oh, let me let me stop you there. That's when your voice started to change. You started to. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. Well, let me back up here just a second. Because I want to make sure I understand this correctly. Okay. That trauma, and we want to get into that trauma some more. Okay. It has a lot to it, that a lot of pieces in it that I want to explore with you. But for the moment, but for the moment, what I'm hearing is starting then, you begin to have difficulty speaking. Am I correct in that from age 13, it very gradually over time yeah. got worse? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So at age 13, you could speak and still be heard. It was just... It was a little challenging. I couldn't in, at that moment in class. She couldn't at that moment I in couldn't class. Function couldn't at she loved all. she couldn't function at all. So terrible. But after we left, I could actually start up painting out with words and certain certain conversations. And after that, she, the voice would fade out in certain circumstances. Under certain circumstances. So, so there were times when you could speak normally and other mm -hmm. times, certain circumstances, it was a, it was a challenge. Yes. Yes. Like a teacher remarked that I could yell out. Teacher remarked once that she could yell outside when doing sports. But that was cool. Okay. But that she was so quiet in class. in class. Okay. Now, all I know, Sally, is what you tell me. So I have to make some guesses. So you always have to correct me. Okay. Right. Always correct me. So I'm, I'm doing my best to guess because I don't have all the facts. Right. Okay. Right. But what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is in that classroom, in that setting, when you froze, whoa, you know, here comes the inability to speak. Now, when you're out of the classroom, you're in recess, you're out playing, you can yell, etc. You're not in that setting. Mm -hmm. Then your voice reacts normally. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go back in the classroom. Now you have some problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now yes. I'm, al I'm also hearing that as time goes on and I'm guessing at this, Sally, mm -hmm. so Please correct me. But as time goes on, other settings, maybe not in the classroom, but settings that might remind you of the classroom, mm -hmm. maybe your living room, because it's a closed in space, maybe the workplace, if you work someplace that in a building, maybe some other place that reminded you of that setting, or maybe in the presence of authoritative people like teachers, it happened. Now I, I'm guessing that. Am I? Am I on? Yeah. Yes. I finished college. I finished college. I had a tough time in class. Yeah. In classes where people are called on rent. Where people are called on rent. To deliver a report. I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. And it was very scary. It was very scary. I'd start to pass out. I'd start to pass class. out in class. Things would go dark. Things would go dark. <laughs> and I was okay. Terrible. And that was terrible. I, okay. I managed. But I managed. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you this, Sally, let me ask you this. And wait a second before answering this, because I want you to be sure you're accurate. Okay. Yep. Am I an authority to you? Like a teacher? No. We are talking about you. I didn't no. hear it. No. Is he talking about yes. I see. Is he a teacher figure in that no, respect that would trigger no, no, that no. feeling? I think no. I was getting that. No. Okay. What I'm really, what I really want to know is whether there's something about me 
you know, being the head of this course and a teacher, if you will, that is going to be in the way just because of me nope. for us making progress. Oh, okay. Nope. All right. All right. She, you, yeah. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to talk again for a little while, but again, this is going to be vitally important that you correct me because if we start doing things, it's going to be because I have certain perceptions here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you mm -hmm. need to make sure that, that my perceptions are in line. I think they're right, but you have to tell me. Okay. I so here you are, Sally, with a speech issue, a speech challenge. Mm -hmm. It started, you think, at age 13 in this freeze experience in the classroom. Okay, got it. That's where it seemed to have started. I'm thinking, even though you may have been able to speak well even before that, that the actual beginnings of it began even earlier. Yes. Okay, yeah. because you were criticized, slapped in the face, and mm -hmm. otherwise abused by a source of love, your mother, mm -hmm. an authority. She's supposed to be a source of love. You're a young child. Every young child looks for love. Every adult does too, but every young child is looking for love. And the major source, of course, is a mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's supposed to be your source of love. And what she does is abuse you, hits you, criticize you, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't help as a young child to begin to start developing things like there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. I yep. don't count. I'm not lovable. All those mm -hmm. things are in the same basket. Yes. So far, so good? Right. Yes. Okay. So while it seems like this issue in the classroom at age 13 is the critical point, there's some logic to say it started even further back than that. Way back. Way, yeah. 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 Maybe even, Sally, mm -hmm. in the womb. Yeah, I'm I, I didn't hear it. Yes, I wonder about that. Okay. <laughs> My mother, because my mother was an artist. She was an artist. Went to art school. Went to art school. Got married. Got married. Suddenly had, Suddenly had four kids. Mm. She was totally stopped in what she wanted to do in her life. And she loved approval and notice, admiration. From others. I can imagine. And I can imagine I was really blocking that experience okay. for. All right, really, really good feedback, Sally. Really good feedback. You you get a California kiss. <laughs> <laughs> now. As you start learning this course, some of the more advanced features of it, which you'll get to in time, but not early on. We're going to do a little bit of it now, okay? But what you'll be learning in time is called reframing. That is to being able to see the situation through healthier eyes, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the ways to do that is to, I mean, we're recognizing there's young you looking for love like every child does, not getting it and getting the opposite of it. There's something wrong with you and, and, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. You can't help but start developing these beliefs about yourself, mm -hmm. which until they get resolved, keep carrying on. Mm -hmm. And really got triggered big time at age 13 in the classroom mm -hmm. and showed up physically in the voice mm -hmm. speaking. Okay. So we want to do a little reframing, and that is we're not going to excuse your mother's behavior. We're not going to excuse it. We are going to try to understand it, mm -hmm. because as we understand it, hopefully we're going to get some 
freedom from any angers and fears and whatever else that may be kicking around and limiting us today. Mm -hmm. Right. Perceptions that we have about my mother didn't love me, mm -hmm. which, by the way, may be very true. That may yeah. be very true, but that's not your issue. That's hers. Yep. Okay. But it's one thing to, for you and I to talk about it and sort of academically discuss it. Mm -hmm. It's another to actually own it so you begin to get free from it. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that we can do with unseen therapists. Now, we're probably, not, we may or may not, I'm going to hope you and I are going to do an unseen therapist session now with your permission. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm hoping we're going to do is knock the center out of this. That is get you started well mm. in this and we're recording it. So you have, you can go back and re see this over and over and over again, if you want to and repeat this session we're going to do over and over if you want to. Okay. But let's talk about your mother for the moment. Well, do this, do this for me. I, I, wanna, I just want to test something. Some people can, I'm going to ask you to do an exercise. You may or may not be able to do it. It's okay if you can't. We're just going to try. If you can do something with it, great. If you can't, that's okay too. There's no pressure on it. We're just going to give it a shot, okay? So if you would, just close your eyes for me, okay? And as best you can, Imagine yourself in the womb. I know that's way beyond your normal memory and all of that, but just imagine there and, and tell me, are you sensing something comfortable, uncomfortable, anything at all? Nothing to tell me what? Uncomfortable. Un Un uncomfortable um on a scale of zero to ten how uncomfortable ten is oh very uncomfortable and zero is not that much okay. eight eight okay well let's just talk about that for a minute now we don't know how accurate that is of course this is way beyond your memory this is a it's a guideline. It's a guideline is what it is. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's just assume for the moment that in the womb, you're uncomfortable. You're feeling not wanted. You're feeling. It feels like that. I, 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 feels like that tied up. Yeah. That, tight. That. Feels tight. Tight. Okay. okay. All right. Tight, tied up. Mm. Tied up. Constricted is a good word. <laughs> okay. um, well, one of the thing, one of the things that we know from medicine, and remember, I'm not a doctor, okay. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we know from medicine is that our medical scientists can put sensors on mother's pregnant belly, mm -hmm. and and they they have found that the fetus the embryo inside reacts to what's going on with mother. If mother's in an argument with, her, with somebody, yeah. the fetus picks that up. Okay. Yeah. If mother's having very loving thoughts, the fetus picks that up as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now all of us, and this includes Nick, by the way, Hello. <laughs> while we're in the womb, Get a blend of these things. I, I have never met anybody who can go nine months in pregnancy and never have a negative thought. It ain't going to happen. Okay, you're, you're irritated about this, angry about that, loving thoughts. They all go on. They all go on. And the fetus picks up a blend. I got a blend. You got a blend. Nick gets a blend. Everybody gets a blend. Okay. All right. It seems like the blend that you got from your mother wasn't, wasn't all that good. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what she's sensing. Okay. Now, that, that can be, and often is, foundational in what happens once you come out of the birth canal and, and so on. Okay? Yeah. If you come out with a foundation of 
nobody wants me or it's an unsafe world or, or there's fear and mm-hmm. all that stuff. It's not to be criticized. It's just we observe. It. That's mm-hmm. what happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you come out seemingly with this kind of a background, this kind of a beginning, if you will. Mm-hmm. And then apparently, you know, uh, uh, mother has other goals besides raising four children. Mm-hmm. And you're in the way. So are the others, apparently. And so she's got a lot of unrest within herself. Now, I need to stop one second here and go back. Let me ask you another question. As far as you know, your mother, would I be accurate in assuming that one of her greatest needs, if not her greatest need, would be love? Okay. (laughs) So here she is, got pregnant early. Her life gets screwed up with a bunch of kids. All Mm. right. I don't know much about her background, but but I also understand that there wasn't a lot of love in her family, as far as you know. She she was She was missing a lot from her parents. Okay. Austere New England types. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Her mother in particular. Yeah. All right. So let's pick up on that for the moment. Again, Sally, we're not excusing your mother's behavior. Despite all that, she could yeah. have she could have behaved differently. She could have been much more loving for you, and so on. Okay. Could have, but we're not. So we're not going to excuse the behavior, despite the reasoning behind it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But we are going to try to understand it. All right. And here she is, someone who didn't get love from her own parents, apparently, at least not big time love. You know, here's someone got pregnant too early. The children are in a, are a burden and irritation, including you. All right. Am I right? Mm-hmm. OK. Yes. All right. And I can tell you from sitting in this chair for all these years that what, one of the things people do when they have all this unrest inside and unrest would be a mild word probably here. You could call it anger if you wanted to, even rage sometimes and so on. But all this unrest inside, they need to do something with it. Okay. If they're not going to go inside and resolve it, which is what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. you get my applause, okay. <laughs> Another kiss, okay. <laughs> all right. What they do is try to project it out there. Blame, blame. We project mm-hmm. out, hit, blame, criticize, and all of that mm-hmm. with the erroneous thought that when they do that, they're getting rid of it. But mm-hmm. they aren't. It's a very temporary thing because it'll be back tomorrow, if not an hour from now. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So in one sense, and again, again, Sally, we're not excusing her. We're not excusing her, your behavior. We're understanding it. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know what else to do besides to do all mm-hmm. that, okay? Mm-hmm. And maybe she even rationalizes to say, well, if you're going to raise children, it's a tough world. You got to be, you can't just, you know, be nice to them all the time. It's a tough world, so I'll be tough to them. I mean, some people rationalize that, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, we're not excusing the behavior. Mm-hmm. We're understanding it. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to I'm going to pause this recording for a moment. Uh, I'm, I've got to go get myself some water. So I'm going to pause, get some water. I'll be right back. OK. OK. All right. We're back. We're back now. OK. Before, before, before we begin again. So I want to ask your just your intuition on something. Mm-hmm. Does it seem to you intuition wise that if the emotional reason behind your speaking difficulty was improved or erased, mm-hmm. that you would be able to speak normally? Mm-hmm. You think that? Mm-hmm. 
another way yeah. to say that another way to say that is there like if some doctors told you oh there's something wrong with whatever it is and you're you'll never be able to speak again yeah um yeah my your what got affected? Your breathing got affected also. And everything tightened up. Everything tightened up. And I developed And she developed spasmodic dysphonia. I think could be clear, um, I just mentioned the She just visited a neurologist. And she got Botox. And I Botox. And she got Botox shots. And I can see She put a microphone up. She put a microphone up. I can see her. My I can hear what my muscles were doing all the time. The Botox calmed it down. But yes, I think it could get better. Okay. Well, Again, I'm not a doctor. In my view and in my experience, while there may be some muscle things going on, okay, there's a cause for that. All right. Everything has a cause. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't surprise me to learn that all of this abuse, criticism, freezing and the age 13 thing and all of that mm -hmm. Contribute to a cause needs to be unraveled. That's my view, anyway. Yep. That's my view. Something else I remember. Well, if you recall my book on the unseen therapy, I had a section in there about doctors and and them not really knowing what causes much of anything. Do you recall that? <laughs> Fine. I didn't mention spasmodic dysphonia in there, but I remember looking it up once upon a time. On WebMD. And if I recall it right, yet again, here it said, doctors that don't really know what's causing spasmodic dysphonia. Mm -hmm. And then they'll give a few things that might contribute to it or something, but they don't know. Okay. Okay. Now, now let me, let me go a step further. Here's one thing they do know. And it's very well known in all of medicine. Every doctor will agree with this. I've yet to find one that doesn't. And that's this. When you or I are carrying around negative thoughts, anger, grief, guilt, mm. that kind of thing, okay, worry, doubt, uh, mm. our system sets off a cascade of negative chemistry. That's my simplified term, okay? Right. Your adrenaline goes out of balance. Your cortisol goes out of balance. Uh, hundreds of chemical reactions in your body that are there to repair things and all that get impaired. I mean, it, it's a really, it's a cascade of bad stuff. Okay. Right. And so your immune system has to go deal with it. If it didn't, you'd be in trouble. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's only so much of that immune system. And if you've been criticized and what and all this stuff and you have subconsciously these negative things going on, mm -hmm. your immune system is not taking care of it. And it's bound to have physical symptoms. Right. Like the voice thing. Okay. Yep. Every doctor knows that. Every doctor knows mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. They don't, they just don't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. But that, that to me is the cause. That kind of thing is the cause of every ailment that we have. That's my view anyway. And I've mm -hmm. seen this over and over and over again. Anyway, anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're going to spend a little time with unseen therapists. How's your energy? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Well, you, you get to sit back and, and relax because because I'm going to do all the work here. OK, well, I'm, I'm going to narrate everything. Well, um, you just follow along. Well, and 
if at any time you need to interrupt me for anything, is Nick sitting right there? I can't see him. I am. Yes. Okay. I am. Uh, she's going to reach over and hit you or something like that. Okay. And she's going to say something and we'll just, it's okay. We can interrupt it. It's okay. Okay. Because I, if there, if there's some feedback, I just need to know what it is. All right. Sure. All right. Okay. So if you would, Sally, close your eyes for me. All right. And take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. Uh, good. And now just, just recall some loving moment in your life, a simple little loving moment, and just nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. And let me, with your eyes still closed, Sally, let me digress just for a moment, because this recalling a loving moment is sometimes misunderstood by newcomers. So let me just talk about it for a moment so we don't have that misunderstanding here. Some newcomers think, recall a loving moment. Well, we're going to be calling on God, the unseen therapist of spiritual dimension. I better do this right or I'm going to fail. You know, so they, they tend to think they need to have a Hollywood moment. They need to bring in angels and harps and warm feelings and trumpets and drums and da-da-da-da-da-da. No, no. You need to lighten up about that if, if you carry that thought around. All you're really doing with the recalling a loving moment is you are doing your best to align yourself with the pure love of the unseen therapist. She represents a love, God's love, Holy Spirit's love. She represents a form of love that is beyond the grasp of you and I. So we're just doing our best. You can imagine a, simply a dog looking you in the face. Oh, nice, loving moment. Okay, That's all it takes. That's all it is. Unseen therapist is always there, always guiding. The problem is we're not always listening. Mm -hmm. In fact, we rarely listen. But by recalling a loving moment, we're just telling unseen therapists, hey, we're going to give you a little something now to work with. And we're listening. That's all. Okay. So nothing more than that. So in your mind's eye, we're going to spend a little time because we want to do a few things here. So if you would go back in time, go back to the womb, as a matter of fact, even though you don't have much in the way of memory there, just imagine yourself, you're in the womb. And you're feeling this tightness. Something is tight. Something is constricting. It's tight. Something's wrong here. This, this is an insecure feeling. It's a fearful feeling. It's a bad feeling. And so that's you not knowing how to make sense of any of this. And so now we're going to represent that feeling because that, that perception shows up the rest of your life. It's foundational. So we're going to go to unseen therapists and we're going to say, look, unseen therapist, my mother is really not ready to have me. She may not want me. She is in over her head, got pregnant too early. She wasn't given a lot of love by her parents. She doesn't even know how to love. I be through no fault of my own, that is of Sally's own. I may be an imposition to her, an irritation to her. That's got nothing to do with me, Sally. But I can see how mother would find that irritating, wanting to get on with her own life and maybe sorry for what could have been a pleasant experience or erotic experience as I was conceived, but I didn't get to play in that party either. I was just a result of it. Okay. So we're not excusing mother's behavior. We're just telling unseen therapists we're recognizing this. And so I, Sally, am feeling tight in here. Something is wrong. And unseen therapists, because we're now open to her, says, look at, understandable. 
So your mother has her own problems. Yes. No question about that. She has them. She has them. She has them. Been having them for years. Been having them long since you were ever conceived. So let's represent all these emotional things going on that you're picking up from mother and are foundational to you and that are not peaceful. Let's represent them as that tightness that you feel in your body. Tight, 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 tight. Okay. And then in your imagination, let's let unseen therapist send a loving, cooling, healing breeze towards you in the womb. And here it comes, and it starts to surround you. It gets inside your body, where all the tightness may be. And the tightness itself kind of takes a deep breath. Ah. Because the tightness doesn't have to really be there. The tightness is simply your response to something you don't understand and can't as a fetus embryo inside of a somebody else's body. Let me take another breath. Let me let unseen therapists send another cooling breeze towards us. But this one, this cooling breeze is a little different than the first one. This one has some little fingers in it that can go into where the tightness is and untie the knots. Very gently, very cleverly, very quietly. Ooh. Untie some knots, untie some knots, untie some knots. Spend a few moments on your own, Sally, with the unseen therapist, this breeze, and these little fingers. Untying Ooh. knots. Do the best you can. Maybe they'll get untied, maybe not. But just go as far as you can go. And whenever you've gone as far as you can go, just say, okay, and we'll go on. Okay, all right. keep, keep the eyes closed. We're, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep going. And you might want to recognize that if you didn't get complete freedom in untying the knot, you can replay this recording. Another round, a little more freedom, etc. But those untying those knots represents freedom from something you didn't even create. Okay. It's a protective mechanism. That's all you know how to do at that oh so, oh so young age. So you created the knots as some kind of a protection, some kind of a barrier against something that you need no barrier against. So time goes on. We will fast forward a bit. You're out of the birth canal. And even starting at very early ages, at ages you cannot remember, with detail anyway, mother is critical. Maybe she doesn't change your diapers very often. Maybe she yells at you and pushes you around because you're crying. Maybe she doesn't feed you when she should. Maybe a lot of things. We don't know. We don't know. But we do know. There's a high likelihood that your, your response to all these things needs addressing. Because it, is, it isn't what your mother did or didn't do. It's your response to these things that needs correcting, and we can correct it. So at this point, in this, this age span of mm -hmm. zero to several years old, five, six, seven, eight, or something like that, there are many, 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 many such criticisms. Maybe you got hit, slapped, criticized, and so on. We're going to represent the, those, all of those, 
to unseen therapists. Now, just as a reminder, when you learn this course, we want to break these down into specific events. But right now, we're going to try to grab them all together. You may have to undo them one at a time later. Okay. We're trying to knock the center out of some of this. Okay. So let's just lump all those together, all those criticisms, criticisms and abuses together. Understanding that none of these things are your fault. Sure, you're acting like a kid and you're getting into trouble, or whatever kids do. <laughs> we all do it. I did it. Nick, Nick certainly did it. Am I correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. So whatever you did, you're just being a kid. We're not going to blame you for any of that. <laughs> you're just being a kid. But mother's response to all that and your response to mother is what we're going to deal with. It's your response, not the actual facts of the case. Mm -hmm. So we're going to represent your response to all that. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's guilt. Maybe it's rage, maybe it's fear, resentment. What am I hearing? Yep. Yes. Anger. 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 anger and fear. Anger and fear. Okay. So all this anger, justifiably, of course, you're, you're just a little bitty person. Here's this great big person and a source of love and an authority in your life. Criticizing you, not loving you. What's all this about? Something's wrong with me. I'm not lovable. How else can you conclude anything else? Okay. Unseen therapist knows this. She knows you are as lovable as anybody on this planet. She loves you. Can you hear her actually? Can you hear her say, I love you? Hmm. Yes. I can't very warm I get very warm sensations. Good. All right, because she's going to say that often to you from this point forward. Just to reinforce, I love you. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't, your mother may not, your mother may not know how to love you. We're not going to, we're going to love your mother anyway. We're not going to excuse the behavior. And close your eyes if you would, Sally. Okay. We're going to make an effort at loving your mother. Your mother needs love, quite obviously. Yeah. Really need, just like you do, like yeah. I do, like Nick does, like everybody does. So unseen therapist again says, I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. Your mother may not, me may not know how, but I do, I always have, I always will. There is no change here. All I am is love. That's all you are. You just think you're running around inside of a separated body. It's a big illusion. But we'll take you where you are. We'll take you where you are. Okay. We need to move from that perception to really a grander one. And I love you. I absolutely love you. I admire you for what you're doing here. This, is, this can't be altogether pleasant. Okay. But I admire you. I love you. And so... We're going to represent all these, this anger and these fears as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Like a, you don't have to actually create a vibration around your heart. Just imagine it. It's a metaphor, you know, ta-ta, 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 like that. Okay. Unseen therapist recognizes all this. I love you. I love you. And she sends another cool breeze, but this one's got I love you floating all the way through it. It enters your system. It sees this unwanted vibration around your heart representing all this fear and anger and knows it need not be. This is decades ago. You don't have to keep this around now. What good does that do? Okay. And so as the breeze comes in and the I love you's come in, the vibration goes ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Ta-ta. And all you're left with is I love you. But now we're going to do it again. Here's all this anger, all this fear about what somebody else is doing that you have nothing to do with. 
It's your mother's unrest that you don't know how to handle, but you are with the unseen therapist. So fear and anger, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. The breeze, the I love you, I love you, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now, let's fast forward and let's go to age 13 or thereabouts to your high school. And somebody else is reciting some kind of a romantic poetry. Apparently doing a good job in the classroom. And the teacher turns to you and you suddenly freeze. You are replaying all the criticisms from all those years that your mother gave you. <gasps> I'm on the spot. <gasps> I can't do it as well as that other person did. <gasps> I am replaying criticism after criticism after criticism from my mother. I'm replaying the slaps, the hits. I'm replaying all of that. There's a penalty if I screw this up and I freeze. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Except unseen therapist says, yeah, but I love you. <laughs> ah, I, I understand you're free. And you weren't listening to me then, Sally, but you can listen to me now. I was there then, but you weren't listening. You were listening to all the stuff that you were replaying from all the abuses you had had as a child up until that point, all the lacks of love and everything else. You never heard me. Not criticizing. Hardly anybody hears me. They're too busy with their own ego stuff and get, trying to get through this imaginary world. Mm -hmm. But there you are, frozen with fear. Fear's the right word here? Yes. Frozen with fear. Frozen like with ice. Ice around you. You can't move your fingers. You can't move your elbows. You can't move anything. You're just frozen with fear. You can't even move. And well, I guess you could run out of the room. Did you run out of the room? I forgot. No, okay. No. She couldn't move. She froze. Okay. Here comes unseen therapist, recognizing you're sitting there in your own self-imposed block of ice. Nobody put that around you except you. It is your response to all that went before this one crescendo moment. All that replay, all those penalties for doing something wrong, all those I'm not good enough that I'm not lovable are all coming up. And the spotlight is on you, and you better do it right. Frozen. Here comes unseen therapist. But this time, it isn't a cool breeze. It's a warm breeze. <laughs> I love you all over it. And it circulates around the ice. And the ice, of course, cannot stay frozen. With all this nice, we're even going to call it a tropical Hawaiian breeze. All right? <laughs> And there you are inside the block of ice. And the ice starts to melt. And one of the things that as the ice melts, you can start to hear with your ears. I love you. Ah, I love you. I'm right here. I'm right here. I've always been here. I love you. And the ice melts. And the ice melts. And you can move your fingers and your toes, and your knees, and your elbows, your shoulders, the ice melts. It's no longer even cold. It's sort of like a nice, warm jacuzzi bath yeah, where everything is, flows easily and nicely and all the joints move beautifully. And in your imagination, if you would like to, it's kind of an option for you. Imagine yourself sitting in this special, very special, special for you, hot tub. And all the rest of the kids in the class are looking at you going, oh, look at this. She gets to be in a hot tub. And there you are. You don't even need to read anything. You just start speaking eloquently. 
about stuff they all need to hear. And you're being helped by unseen therapy because she knows what everybody needs to hear. You may not know yet, but she knows. And even though the words may not say, I love you, they are still words that emanate, I love you. And everyone in that classroom, everyone in that classroom doesn't care about the prose or whatever, the poetry or whatever. They got it. They got it. They're all looking for love themselves. And where does it come from? The one little princess in the hot tub who is finally recognizing she is love. Always has been. Mother has her own issues. Mother needs to have her own hot tub someplace. Okay. <laughs> open your, just open your, that's enough for now. Open your eyes. That was great, That was great, Gary. I think I even heard that a little better. I think. Good. <laughs> So I did cathartic. Say it again. So cathartic. Oh, so cathartic. Okay. Well, cathartic's hard to say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're recording this now, so you can go back over this session and all the things we talked about. And you may want to see it twice, three, a whole bunch of times. Okay. Yeah. And you can take specific events that you will, be, you will learn how to design. You're already starting on that with your list from the book, okay? Mm -hmm. You can take these specific events and start, if you want to, plug them in. Even though we were talking about your age 13 thing, you can still, it takes a little skill, but you get the idea. You can plug that in there. Um, and then after a while, of course, you'll get, You'll get so used to doing them. These are like training wheels. And eventually, mm -hmm. I mean, you'll be able to customize this stuff to your, to your own. Now, a couple other things I want to mention to you. Um, well, for, several things. One, and we're rec recording, so you don't need to take notes. You can just hear it later. But I'm going to emphasize going back to the latest version of my book, and going over the instructions for the personal peace procedure. Mm -hmm. There's a sentence in there. The moment when, remember that? The moment when, mm -hmm. whatever happened, and I currently mm -hmm. feel the emotion mm -hmm. about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really understand that piece and the instructions for the specific event and bringing in the personal peace procedure, et cetera. Really understand it, practice it, even though you may or may not get results. You may mm -hmm. or may not. Okay. Mm -hmm. The important thing is you practice it because that idea, that skill, that tool is going to show up over and over and over and over again. It's sort of like, it's sort of like if you have an automobile mechanic and he's going to fix your car, he has to have tools. And in that toolkit, he has to have a wrench. If he didn't have a wrench, he's not, he's not going to do much with your car, okay? This is like the wrench in our toolkit, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you'll learn much more about that wrench as you study the course, because that in the book is an intro version. But you need to get to that intro version, do those specific events, the moment when, da 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 da, -da. Get that down, because that is so fundamental. All right. Now, from there, then you go to the article, read this first, how to take this course. And you told me you've read that. Mm -hmm. Those are the instructions for the, remember, I'm the engineer. So you take them phrase by phrase. Like, this is how you do it. You go, it says to do this. Okay. I'm going to do this. Did I do it right? Yeah. Oh, I forgot that part. Oh, let's go back. <laughs> so you're, you're always referring back. Eventually you will have this, the instruction set, that one page memorized because you'll be doing it. <laughs> referring back it's very important that you too many people get hurry up itis mm -hmm. you know and they just want to rush all through this and it, it costs them eventually mm -hmm. so do it that way and again i'll i'll point out to you and you'll see it over and over again but i'm just going to emphasize it 
You need to do this thoroughly, not quickly. Thoroughly, not quickly. All right. Now, we also have webinars, live support, where you can raise your hand and ask questions. Now, if your speech difficulty is still with you as time goes on, have Nick come with you. You can raise, if you have a question you want to ask, you know, mm -hmm. I tried this and that didn't work, or what do you mean when you said that kind of stuff? You can have Nick ask the question, okay, if you want. Mm -hmm. All right. So those live webinars happen every other Sunday. We just had one yesterday. Were you there? No. Well, the, re the, recording, the recording is now up. And I'll give you a link to it in Thursday's newsletter. You're on our newsletter? I think so. Yes, I think so. Okay. Now, the other thing, and this may be a real challenge for you with the speech, so you'd probably need Nick for this, okay, um, until, until your speech gets better. Um, and then we have practice groups where members get together and they work on each other's issues. Mm -hmm. Now, until you can get to the point where you can be heard better, mm -hmm. but, I, but I would join them. I would try to join them. I, I would tell them you have the handicap and so on. Mm -hmm. You can even start your own and say what the handicap is, mm -hmm. but then Nick will be you with you as a da 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 and so on. But to work with other people, so mm -hmm. love is best when it's shared. Mm -hmm. And so, while it may be a challenge, there's probably a way to get it done. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, that may be it for today, huh? Very nice to meet you. Thank you very much. All right. Anything else you want to go over before we close the curtain here? One thing. All right. Hello. She has a joke picture she wants to send. That ties in perfectly. That ties in perfectly with Unseen Therapist. Okay. Well, you can, you can send it to me. Uh, uh, send it to gary at emofree.com. Gary at emofree, E-M-O-F-R-E-E.com. Just make an attachment or however you send it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I, I enjoy you. Thanks. So, so, that was really yeah. interesting. Thanks. You, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. you know what? You, you know what, yeah. dear? You know what, dear? Where, where are you located in the world? What city? I uh, am. Yeah. San Francisco. Oh, well, we're almost. There. I'm. I'm at Sea Ranch. I'm about two hours north of you. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, anyway. Anyway. Um, oh, I love. I love animals. Um, what's your cat's name? Margarita. Margarita. All right. Anyway, my dear, anyway, my dear, I'm going to give you a sea ranch hug. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 a, and a, the unseen therapist and I join together in singing, I love you. <laughs> You're great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank you. All right. I, I, will, I will send you this recording within the hour. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.